Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to part two of the Indy Cup Canada 2023 jury nominations. My name's Simon. I look after Higher Plane Network. As part of that is Higher Plane Games. So you get to enjoy uh, myself having a not very nice cola zero sugar zero caffeine thing. This isn't as nice as Pepsi, I must admit. Though they're all bad for you, but never mind. Um, <clears throat> I'll apologise in advance. My throat is on its last legs, um, so I will be kind of having to clear throats during conversations and stuff. But that's just the way how it is at the moment. Um, in part one, we went through the first 47 of the 80 entries that are in for Indy Cup Canada 2023. We're going to now look at the rest um, I'll be looking for games that are interesting, different, try something unique, have a style about it, or just pique my interest. It's always difficult. And I think this is why you need to kind of learn a bit about what creators you follow before you kind of go, oh, yes, they're a definitively good reviewer for me, um, to understand what people look for. So I'll uncover that as we go. Let's kick off with the first uh, game then of this stream it's called foul damage it's by red nexus games it's in its alpha state and this one is being developed by one person so it's a solo dev it's an atmospheric puzzle platform let's take it away Pardon? <laughs> Great start to the stream. Uh, let me just mute that whilst we try and get some of that uh, stuff back. Um, so yeah, this game reminds me of... Um, I do like the fact that a game called Foul Damage is followed by a vagina advert. I don't think you're selling yourself well on the advertisements. Do you, Panda Chan? No. Um... So we've got, <clears throat> this game reminds me of a um, platformer game called Read for some reason. I think it's the way how you've got little jutted out platforms and you're having to kind of leap and roll between the uh, smaller leaps because Read didn't have a very good jump button. Um, I like the fact you have to think about how delicate your shell is for your egg so that you don't hit either the ceiling or the floor or jump too high or too short. Um, and it, but it gives you enough string to hang yourself with. Um, so I quite like the idea behind that. Again, it's in the alpha stage, so very early on. This looks like it could be a really fun puzzle platformer. And the way how those um, boss battles were kind of charging at you means that you have to stay practical whilst also keeping on your toes, which I think will exasperate that whole cracking egg thing. So yeah, I was quite impressed with this um, uh, uh, trailer and the way how it's all been put together. That is foul damage from Red Nexus Games. It's in its very early phase. Next up is a game called Goons, Legends and Mayhem by Rage Cure Games. It's a team of six to ten people and this game is in the beta phase of production. So it'll be published by Firestoke Games once it's ready. Welcome to Zambonia, a quaint and prosperous kingdom where hockey is at the center of everything. A land of sports, of penguins, of <laughs> wizards, purple cataclysm? Wait, wait, wait. You can't fit all of this into a hockey game. 
Oh, you can! Super duper. So this is the Soul Sports game that was has been put into Indie Cup Canada 2023. Sorry for my squeaky chair. I'm too fat. I broke it. Um, and it's all around hockey, boss fights, but also the general carnage, carnage, and chaos. There we go. That um, you wouldn't necessarily expect because it's been taken to the crazy local multiplayer uh, phase. So. You can do 1v1, 2v2, or 3v3 three, three, three matches, online or in local co-op, which I think is a great idea. Um, different hazards, uh, different arenas, all of that kind of stuff as well. So, yeah, this looks really, really cool to me. Um, I adore local multiplayer party-style games, so this is right up my street. Hadn't heard of it before. I will be wishlisting this after today. Um, and... I think also, and you can't control this, um, but it's the only sports game that's been included, so it stands out from that point as well. Whereas I think I was commenting earlier where we had several of the same genre all in, and I was like, oh, I, you start, you can't help but start comparing about what's the best of those couple, and and I can't really do that with Goons because um, it's the only sports one. There's a couple of local multiplayer ones coming up later on, but um, yeah, impressed with that. Um, I quite like the theming of it too. So that's Goons, Legends and Mayhem by Rage Cure Games. Next up is a quirky little puzzle game called Lucky Me by Artifact 5. This is in the beta phase and it's from a team of two to five people. So, firstly, I really like that uh, jingle. <laughs> Secondly, I really like the concept of this. So, the idea, and I, I, the copy of this, I'll just read it out. In a world devoid of originality, where talentless hacks copy your every move, you've got to use their stupidity against them to come out on top. What a comment on today's society and the uh, throwaway nature of everything that's going on in this world. Um, so the idea is that it's bringing together puzzle, shooting and rap <laughs> so that you can then do your own stuff. I did cringe at the amount of dub at the end of it all or dabbing, sorry. Um, I just kind of like, oh, no. But the actual concept of this, um, I really, 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 really like. Um, apparently it will be coming with an level editor so that you can make your own levels or remix um, them and then challenge your friends with them so yeah really really like the idea behind this I was getting slightly confused and and I have to say the gameplay video didn't help <laughs> with how they follow because it says oh yeah they follow your every move but um they don't specifically if you watch it and so I was trying to work out what are the cues for everything that it kind of what it actually does follow so I'm sure there's some hidden uh, gameplay bits that actually tell you to like copy slash not copy or whatever um, as you go so yeah um, look forward to diving into that one hadn't heard of it beforehand will be adding this to my wish list this is my kind of puzzle game <laughs> and uh, yeah enjoy it so that's lucky me by artifact 5 currently in beta 
Next up is a game called Red Trigger 2. Now, um, this is quite a chunky trailer. We're still going to play it, though. It's by Bold Spirit Game Studio, a team of two to five. And it's a first-person adventure game um, inspired by Portal, Metro Pri Metroid Prime, Bioshock and Psychonauts. What a combo. Let's take a look. What if all of our wounds, our injuries, and our scars stopped hurting? What if our anxiety, our bad memories, and all of our worries could just disappear? What if our diseases would not affect us and our loved ones anymore. I was about to say, what if this game is sponsored by BetterHelp? All of this <laughs> pain would just stop holding us back. What if I told you that today all of this is possible? Voice change? Uh, where am I? Whoa. Did I do this? And what about this weird gun? <laughs> ah, better. The name's off guard, but people, they simply call me off. <laughs> Unwed, my noble <laughs> steed! What do you think you're doing? Well, I figure I could be your tourist guide. Because I've been following you for the last hour, and you, my friend, are lost. <laughs> All right. Now, let's do this. Folks around the world are praising the work of Alaric Algea, who managed to rid society of physical and mental pain altogether. Help! Make the pain stop! Please, make it stop! How the hell does this technology work? I need to be their pillar of strength. Do you even know what you've done? We both want to end the suffering of others. I like the uh, I like I like the comedy style of that one. So yeah, Red Trigger, and you can spot in the gameplay sections that it was showing there feels portally ish, which is very very derogatory of this kind of how this all works. Um, but the idea is that as you shoot the the red trigger out, um, it will do different things. However, you can only shoot three red triggers at a time. That's the trick to this, which this trailer doesn't necessarily explain. So. You need to understand that you don't want to be standing on a red trigger and then realise that you're going to shoot another one and then take what you're standing on away from you. So it's thinking about that kind of trippy aspect of it, which is quite cool. Um, it is a sequel to Red Trigger. They say that Red Trigger 2 is 10 times bigger than the original. Um, I've not played the original, but I'm intrigued enough based on that trailer to have a look back and see how it works. So that's Red Trigger 2 by Bold Spirit Game Studio. Um, I really like this and um, I've I've become more fond of it uh, the more that I see, if that makes sense, which is only a good thing. So yay, Red Trigger 2. Next up is a game that is already on my wish list. It's called Ete, um, E-T-E, -E, but with uh, accents on uh, both of the E's. And I think I mentioned this in part one. I do like a game where you get to colour the world. <laughs> Spot what's going on here. This is Ete.
energy. Nope. No more curries. Um, yeah, I am a huge fan of this um, specific game. So it takes place in uh, Montreal in summer. And the idea is that you're using watercolour paint to paint the world around you, paint uh, on 2D canvases. But also then expand that, as you see in the trailer, to the 3D worlds that are around you too. Um, different cast, uh, characters will commission you to produce pieces of work which you can then create. Um, what it uh, what it doesn't necessarily go into and what I've yet to like fully understand is just how much um, freedom you have in terms of creating those artworks. But um, what you're doing is going around the world collecting stamps of different things that you can then put into your compositions and move them around and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, really, really excited for that. I think it looks gorgeous, sounds gorgeous. Love the Parisian uh, slash French Canadian uh, slant on all of this, which is great for Indie Cup Canada. What am I saying? So well done to Impossible Studio for Ete. It's in alpha at the moment. It's a team of between 11 and 20 people, and I am super excited for that. It was on my wish list before today. It's staying on my wish list, um, and I'll be keeping a close beady eye on that one. Next up is called uh, Pico. Now, this is made by Kitten Cup Studio. It's in early access, and it's from a team of six to 10 people. Um, I have tried to play a demo of this beforehand, but my experience with Pico has been really, really jaded because every time I've tried to play the demo, the demo is crushed and broken. <laughs> so I'm trying to park my experience of that and to judge it based on what is being shown here um, and the video footage that's been that's come through. But um, yeah, I know this is out in early access. I didn't pick it up because I had such a poor experience with the demo. Um, and I probably won't be looking at picking this up until I've got confirmation that the bugs and stuff is out from here. But here is the Pico trailer to take a look at. So yeah, um, Kitten Cup Studio has created Pico. Um, I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's got that perfect cosy vibe. And it, if I was to try and describe it, it's like Coffee Talk meets Calico meets Cooking Mama, <laughs> which is a fab combo to have. Um, I will just warn though that my demo experience was very poor. Um, so... I am sure other people's mileage on all of that kind of stuff will absolutely vary and they might have had much better and smoother experiences, but I can only speak from my own personal um, playthrough. So yeah, it's on my wish list. It stayed on my wish list. I'm only keeping a BDI on it to make sure the bugs are fixed before I actually dive in and play. Next up is Astral Throne. Now this is made by Zero Sun Games. Not Zero Sun, Zero Sun. It's in Alpha. It's a two to five... Um, developer team that are working on this and it's a retro style roguelike strategy rpg inspired by a fire emblem uh, in particular with little bits of elements from slay the spire um now there isn't a uh trailer for this that i can find anywhere not even on the steam page um so i'll just kind of give a little bit of the story uh, a, a little bit a snippet of the video and kind of then probably rudely talk over the top of the developer. Hello, I'm Michael from Zero Sun Games. Hi, Mike. And this is oh. Astral Throne. 
or rather this is the alpha for Astral Throne that we released uh, for the Steam Strategy Fest. Uh, Astral Throne is a roguelike SRPG heavily inspired by games like Fire Emblem and Slay the Spire. Uh, however, it's not a card game. You'll see more about that in a minute. Astral Throne takes place in a once prosperous kingdom hit by a mysterious falling star which has shrouded the land in a dense fog. Everybody who's been there and back barely seems to remember what their time was like there, as if the fog was taking their memories. But they do remember the land has sort of been taken over by a strange cult-like force. In Astral Throne, you can... I'm just gonna skip forward. ...or convalescent. Uh, the paths are made out of combat encounters. Uh, new memories, which are run modifiers. Like, for example, Lyra starts with an ability to make all of the units faster for the first two rounds. And if we skip forward to the and actual ability, battle. Which is more, seems to be more damage during the player phase, so it'll be useful for us. Bows can hit from a range, and he can't hit me back because he has a melee weapon. The way that you build up your party, as I've mentioned, is by collecting units. And the way that you do these is by recruiting them. You recruit heroes, as mentioned before, at the end of the axe, which are these that end in a boss fight. Um, but you can re recruit militia units by moving up to them during an encounter and recruiting them. Recruits okay. are members of the populace that are not under the spell of this fallen star, uh, but are playing along in order for their own safety. You, your party, being a, a force, a defensive force, is capable of recruiting them into safety. Whoops. Different. So, there we go. So that is Astral Throne. Um, it looks like an interesting SRPG. Um, I think the lack of a concise trailer and overview makes it quite difficult to pull out in a stream like this what I want to kind of talk about um, but there's a few things in here so there is permadeath for every unit that you've got the run-ins when everyone is killed the player progresses as you saw with that overworld through various different encounters trying to recur uh, recount their memories which changes their run as they go so it looks like a nice merge together of an SRPG and a roguelike um, I'm intrigued I've not added it to my wish list at the moment, but um, it's one I will probably keep an eye on and circle back to at a later point. So that's Astral Throne by Zero Sun Games. Um, and thanks for the developer for a nice little detailed walkthrough of that, which was helpful for me understanding the game, um, less stream um, built, I guess. So I didn't want to spend too much time on that one specifically. Next up is a game called Unfortold Witchstone. This is in the pre-alpha phase, and this is, I believe, the only game in uh, Indie Cup Canada 2023 that has a team of more than 20 people involved. So this is the this is the big one if we're talking about stuff. And as you can see, it's from the people that made stories, the Path of Destinies, and o Omen Sight. Um, disclosure, I adore Stories, The Path of Destinies. I think that game is absolutely stunning. Omen Sight is in my backlog, but I have bought both. So thank you, Spearhead Games, <laughs> for making those two games. Let's dive into the trailer. Spice must flow. <laughs>
Now, it is worthwhile saying that that trailer is four years old. So, quite how re like relevant all of that is. Apologies for my chair. Um, question. Um, we were given some additional footage of a later build, but that isn't publicly available for people to talk about. Um, so, yeah, I'm stuck kind of talking with the trailer that's four years old. Um, I do like the idea behind this. It's an RPG sandbox with a influence system, which, um, which is kind of alluded to there. And the idea is that depending on the influence that you build up with your character and personality traits and whether or not um, other characters like or dislike you that then shapes the world around you for whatever it is that you do um, they want to also draw from tabletop rpgs so there's lots of rolling of dices and things like that so yeah looking forward to seeing where this one goes it is difficult and I don't know if this should be a factor or not, but when a game is talking about something that's four years old and we're talking about giving that an award in 2023 when I'm still having to refer back to four-year-old stuff, that's always a little bit iffy for me. But um, yeah, really intrigued to see where Unfortold uh, Witchstone goes. I didn't know too much about this game beforehand. It did ring a bell for me in the distant recesses of my mind. Um, it's not on my wish list though, and it probably will be by the time um, this stream, uh, this day is over. So, uh, Project Witchstone, or Witchstone, uh, sorry, Unfortold Witchstone by Spearhead Games. Next up is a game that is in its finished state. It's by Insert Disc 5, and it's a solo developed game called In Stars and Time. It's a time loop RPG, so let's do the time loop and watch the trailer. Ooh, switch. I like Isabeau as a name. <laughs> like that. <laughs> very well done, very well done. Um, a love me a chip tune soundtrack, because I think we're discovering throughout this whole selection process so it's a time loop RPG, you die, die, and die again. With each loop, uh, Sifrin, who's the main character, gains a new perspective on the world around them, opening up new solutions to puzzles and allowing them to make better choices in conversation. Equip memories as armor, pray to the change god to improve your team's capabilities each loop, and challenge deadly phones with rock, paper, and scissor battles. So that's where the scissor attack comes from. Okay, this makes more sense now. <laughs> um, so yeah, really, really um, pleased and intrigued with that. And thank you as, as well for the additional gameplay footage that was sent through because that did uh, help the game make more sense. So uh, not that the trailer didn't. Um, I had seen um, footage of this in a much smaller guise elsewhere, but I hadn't added it to my wish list. I will be adding this one to my wish list because this is my kind of jam. So well done. In Stars and Time by Insert Disc 5. Solo Devd as well, so well done. Next up is Wastelander by Astronaut Studios. It's in early access, um, and it's only been in early access for the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's a dev team of two to five people. Let's take a look at an indie roguelike colony building. 
game. I mean, props for getting a uh, indie dev, uh, sorry, a, a bass guitar in as your main instrument for for the trailer. Um, I found this game, and I think it's the way how it's been shown in the trailer. But I have to say, the same thing kind of came in through the gameplay footage as well. I found this game quite difficult to discern, like the gameplay loop of what was going on easily. Um, but yeah, the idea is that it's randomly generated seeded maps. Um, so you've got loads and loads of replay value. Daily challenges, I believe, are on there as well around trying to get high scores for how well you can colonise your um, world before it kind of falls over. Um, and yeah, c there's going to be destructive storms coming in, hence whether the storm that's then supposedly going to damage your colony and potentially kill it all off. So it's just trying to see how long you can survive. I think um, there's interesting stuff here going on. I, I don't, it didn't quite scratch an itch for me with whatever the gameplay loop was and how it was presented. So um, I think other people will naturally enjoy it, uh, though perhaps just slightly better than what I did. But yeah. That is Wastelander by Astronaut Studio. Next up is Forever Lost by Altered Gene. This is in the alpha stage and is um, from a team of two to five people. It's a puzzle adventure. Smell escape puzzles. <laughs> So what's interesting here, and it's lost on me because I don't mobile game. So Forever Lost is a remake of a multi-million downloaded mobile franchise coming to PC for the first time. So this might mean much more to more other people than it does to me. But because I don't game on mobiles, excuse a squeaky chair, um, I have no concept of what's gone on beforehand. So I have to take it just at its face value. It looks creepy. Um, it looked point and click puzzly slash escape room puzzly um, which is good for me uh, it does explain that the puzzles are a variety of wordplay fetch quiz and pattern recognition which I think you could see in that trailer there um, and the idea is that you piece back together your memories so that you can reveal your disturbing past um, yeah I'm looking it's interesting I don't know if it's going to be in my top lists for this 
Um, but I couldn't find anything in particular wrong with it, if that makes sense. Um, it's just, I think the atmosphere speaks um, louder than everything else in that game, which um, is a good little captivating device. So that is Forever Lost by Alter Gene, um, currently in alpha. Uh, and talking of mobile gaming, this next game is only for mobile. So it's called Summit to the Summit by Archon Apps. Um, it's a two minute gameplay uh, exploit because there's not a, like a proper trailer for this. It's just a, a gameplay um, explanation, um, which I think if I just turn it down slightly, you'll probably spot immediately what you'll be looking potentially to do. So the idea of this is that you're climbing to the summit by solving math problems. So we had earlier on maths being shown for artistic design. This is just pure maths. <laughs> um, I like the edutainment spin on games. I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, I think it's a very good way to be able to get people to learn things. Um, oops, on that front. Yeah, that's kind of what the game is. <laughs> um, you can focus on a single type of question. As you can see in here, it's all around trying to work out like how difficult do you want your sums to be? And I wonder if it, because, no, it didn't. Um, but the idea is that you kind of take on more and more complex puzzles or different types of puzzles. So it's not just addition, you can do divide, subtract, uh, multiply as well. So yeah. I quite like the idea and concept behind this. I think it's, uh, again, it's a solo developer here that's um, attempting to make this for mobile devices. Um, well done to Archon Apps for pulling that together. It's in beta at the moment. I think it's a solid concept and design. Um, it is extremely simplistic um, in a good way. Uh, I do not necessarily, uh, it's difficult to then put that up against all of the other kind of complicated projects that are out there. So thank you for submitting it in. I think it's good that it exists and I think hopefully it will help some people with their maths. Um, maybe there's a social aspect that that game wins out compared to everything else. Botanical Warden is our next one up by Barnake. Um, is in alpha, is a two to five dev team. Let's take a look. That was a bird. Okay, so Botanical Warden is a deck building roguelike with tactical plant combat. <laughs> so the idea behind this is that it's a botany inspired type uh, like spin on the genre. Uh, I really like the idea of re-theming something so that it feels unique and fresh and I think Botanical Warden does that very very well. Um, I also like their commitment to having a totally detuned original soundtrack, which oddly I found quite cool. <laughs> but then I have a weird taste for music. 
Um, each path and run is procedurally generated. Um, so that will come with pitfalls as well as uh, glorious um, flexibility. And yeah, again, it's one of those ones where until you dive into the demo and take a look at how all of the cards work and all of that kind of stuff um, to understand like balancing and all of that, how this kind of works. But for me, Botanical Warden is one of those games that um, definitely piqued my interest. I didn't know about it before. It will be going onto my wish list after the stream. And yeah, I'm intrigued with that one because a lot of this will be all around theming and then seeing what that theming offers as better like what what can that theming afford this type of game to then do differently being being rethemed isn't strong enough for a top tier critics choice so what else does it um evolve into next up is 1000 x or cross resist this is by sunset visitor it's a two to five dev team it's in beta at the moment and it's a sci-fi adventure let's take a look We are all that's left. Humanity extinguished by a disease brought in their wake. Centuries later, we remain. Protected by the last living human. The All-Mother. We each have our functions, our roles to play. My name and function? Watcher. I relive the All-Mother's memories to understand our future. But after everything I've discovered, I don't know who to believe anymore. Relive the memories of a god. Reclaim your legacy across time. Resist. Thousand-year-old lie. I'm being wiped clean from history. Oh, quite the opposite. You've made an unforgettable mess. Ooh. My life as a game. <laughs> so. Going back to, there's a couple of trailers that have done this across the ones that we've seen so far. This is, to me is one of the best cinematic trailers that we've got in the whole of Indie Cup Canada 2023. I love the way how it explains what's going on, adds enough layer of mystery and with the visuals plus the voiceover and that kind of cinematic uh, sweeping industrial soundtrack. It just all kind of comes together really, really effectively. I love the art style of this. It's really difficult to get this kind of comic book anime style to work in 3D. And it does here, um, for me anyway. Um, and that kind of uh, gentle neon uh, way and wisdom of how all of the colours kind of shine off of each other, I think works really, really well here. Um, but alongside that, it's the... Um, it's the mystery that pulls me in more than everything else this feels like it's about to be a 10 episode Netflix series <laughs> as a game and um, not enough thumbs up could be, couldn't be said about that as well the developer also left a little note as well saying that it will be about uh, just over 10 hours of gameplay um, and the idea is that this is going to talk about um, the 2019 Hong Kong protests and the emotional fallout from it. So it's kind of based in some real world stuff there as well. Talking specifically about diaspora um, and diaspora creators as well. So if you're not aware, diaspora is where you started off in one location and then they've kind of dispersed out to another and then kind of feel slightly untethered from the world because your home isn't your home. It's now somewhere else and you're kind of a bit lost in it all. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to see how this goes. Um, interestingly, when I first watched this uh, trailer and I watched some of the um, 
stream that was also submitted in as well. I was thinking specifically of an anime director called Satoshi Kon, who is one of my absolute favourites. And the developer actually cited Satoshi Kon as one of the people that was their inspiration for some of this. Um, and if you've never watched a Satoshi Kon movie, there are so many that I could recommend. Um, Paprika would probably be my top one. Perfect Blue would be uh, the next one underneath. Um, and Tokyo Godfathers is an absolute classic as well. They're probably the three that I would kind of kick you off with to begin with. Um, they're not easy watches. They're proper good, like, head spinnery. But, um, yeah, love, 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 love. Um, 1000 Exorcist Resist from Sunset Visitor. Can't say enough good things about it. Um, didn't know about it beforehand. Going slap bang on my wish list after this stream. Next up is Honey Badger. Uh, sorry, Honey Badger. <laughs> Not Daniel Ricardo in a stream. Honey Bunny by Chicken Boolean. This is in Alpha. It's a 6 to 10 team, people. Let's dive in. going on with that wall. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so Honey Bunny is a third person action platformer designed to look and feel like a PlayStation 1 or Dreamcast era game. Now, this takes me right the way back to some of my favourite times in gaming, so I am fully on board with that kind of design feature. It's definitely aged worse than 2D sprites, but there's a certain charm around the way how those games are. For me personally, I appreciate other people would be like, what, when they look at some of that. Um, I did find the sassy walk to be quite funny. Um, I love the fact that the entire game is just someone stole all our cocktail cherries is essentially the plot. <laughs> So, yeah, lots of fun to be had there. Um, I did enjoy watching the additional submission footage that was put in too, um, which we aren't showing here. But um, actually, I'd say that the trailer does more to sell the variety of what goes on uh, than the submission that came for itself. Didn't know of this beforehand. Definitely going on my wish list after the stream. Good piece of fun. Honey Bunny by Chicken Boolean. Great name, that. Next up is Worship by Chasing Rats Game. This is in pre-alpha. It's a team of 11 to 20 people working on this. And uh, this trailer is their Kickstarter trailer from two years ago. I have seen an extensive walkthrough of the game since then as part of the Cindy Cup uh, promotion, which we aren't able to show. But let's dive in with this original trailer. So it's worthwhile saying it is now not on Kickstarter because it's well beyond that Kickstarter campaign now. Um, 
so it alludes to some of the stuff in the actual trailer. The trailer doesn't give any gameplay footage, which I didn't realise, apologies. Um, but it's essentially Satanic Pikmin <laughs> was what I picked up from this. Um, so the idea is that you play as um, the leader of a cult, um, but then you gather followers and then you either sacrifice some of your own blood or sacrifice one of your followers and their blood to then create rituals which can then... Um, kick off other events or kill some of the purity people that you're trying to um, kind of take on. It's a roguelike um, take on Pikmin with satanic cultists. What more do you want? Excuse me. Um, yeah, really, really appreciate I can't show you the gameplay footage that we were shown. I was really sold on this because the dev took us through like this 10 to 15 minute walkthrough of like the beginning of the game to show you all of the mechanics and why it's different going back to some of the games that i talked about earlier where it done this particularly well this was another one that did it particularly well so yeah big hats off to me really sold on the concept didn't know about it beforehand going on my wish list now um that's worship by chasing rats games um Really, really looking forward to that, especially as it's in the pre-alpha phase of so very early in development and showing an awful lot of promise. The next one up is a solo developer game called The Last Flame. Now, this is being made by Bogdan Boats. Um, it's in beta. And as you can see, there's some hexes. So let's take a look. Let me remind you, that's a solo developer putting all of that together. Um, there's a few things that really stood out to me with The Last Flame. Um, and th they uploaded a developer stream, which I'd kind of skipped through. I haven't watched the, the whole lot because it goes on for like, a, I think this is, this is one of the ones where it's like an hour and 40 minutes. And I was like, oh, oh I don't have the time for all of that. So I'm going to skip through. And the so a couple of things. It's an auto battler, but you set out all of the positioning and try and work out what's going on and then watch it unfold. And once it's off and away, you're kind of like, wah, wah, wah. Um, and the bit that I was watching in the stream was a developer basically going, oh, God, I think I've done it wrong, <laughs> like on stream and watching all, like most of his minions getting killed. Um, there's a couple of other like tinier quirks that stood out for me. The fact that the characters move inside the card just brings a little bit more life to what is quite often a stagnant, dry phase yes artwork can look fantastic but having it in motion as you're kind of looking at the card i thought was just it's such a tiny little thing but it really stands out um but also just the fact that it's um highly replayable by the looks of it um the way how you've got the different variants of building out all of your different decks i think would be really really interesting to play and yeah a roguelike subgenre of this kind of mmo styled um hex based combat i think would go down really really well so it strikes a, a fresh take on quite a lot of things that we've seen before and so yeah big thumbs up from me for the last flame by bogdan Boats. um that is in uh, beta at the moment so hopefully it won't be too long before that is ready for consumption maybe at some point the next game is called chicken scratch and it's by keely brown who is a uh, part of a team of two to five. This is in alpha and it is a party game. Welcome to Chicken Scratch. 
as one of our new employees, it'll be your job to complete important drawing forms. Your teammates will have to guess what you are drawing. Uh-oh. It looks like this has gotten out of hand. No worries. Your teammates will help pick up the slack. After all the drawings done, it's time to evaluate your work in a presentation. <laughs> to draw. The critics are raving about chicken scratch. <laughs> so, as a fan of Jackbox games, I was instantly drawn to chicken scratch. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of Drawful. Um, but with some added kind of tie the um, pin the tail on the donkey kind of hidden bits that are going on. So to kind of walk through this. So at the start of every game, eat, uh, players receive a randomized prompt um, with a just in a descriptor noun format. So um, the things that they put in here is renegade chicken, supreme banana, spicy grandma. Um, and you have to draw it within a sort time frame. Another player will then receive that drawing and they'll have to try and caption their drawing as accurately as possible. That caption is then passed on to another person to draw and so on. So it kind of goes down this to like this chain of confusion of like Chinese whispers um, until you get to the end and then everyone's like, what the hell? And then you're trying to guess what on earth's going on, but it will be so distorted by then you'll be laughing at what everyone was trying to do. I think this is an absolutely fantastic idea. I think it's ingenious. I think it's similar enough to Jackbox games to bring in the, that type of audience, but different enough in its execution to warrant being a standalone game that doesn't need to kind of, you wouldn't be like, well, I'll just wait for the next Jackbox. This feels different and unique and well implemented in a way that would keep you guessing and uh, intrigued. So yeah, real big fan of Chicken Scratch. Didn't know about it beforehand. Adding to wish list after the stream. Um, big thumbs up from me. Uh, and by largely one person, the two people who are additionally working on that title, apart from Keely Brown, are soundtrack and sound design. So Keely's the one that's been doing all of that. Next up is a game called Aloft by Astrolab Interactive Inc. Incorporated? Um, this is a game that I too am also aware of and already have on my wish list before Indie Cup Canada. So, um, as always, full disclosure, whenever I know about something beforehand, um, here we go. Here was the announcement trailer done earlier this year. Aloft. Love the soundtrack to this trailer. <laughs> oh, 
Everyone loves a space turtle. <clears throat> there we go, that is a loft. Uh, there is a demo that's out. I haven't personally played said demo. There's a few things that I want to kind of call out from this. So A, I think that trailer is beautifully put together um, and really showcases lots and lots of elements of the game, but doesn't necessarily call it out. So this is one of those trailers that tell, that shows rather than tells. And this is something that I think a lot more trailers, particularly if you're going for feel good, cozy, Re not relaxed so to speak but like more intricate games like you don't want to be like explore the world like smash up into the screen and then like something else something else with just like those nodes of text because then your trailer becomes a textathon where you're feeding the narrative rather than watching people kind of get lost in their imagination i think a lot does that very well from a trailer's perspective um the other things that kind of get caught out in this is that obviously you're flying around yourself, but you can also fly, uh, turn your island into a flying ship and fly the island around with it as well, hence aloft. And you're not only doing it by yourself, you can also take up to eight friends with you um, or going a party of eight altogether anyway. So really, really intrigued by how that kind of all comes together. So the idea is that if you want a peaceful and relaxed side of survival then you can just explore and create but if you want to then play with the more survivally hardcore elements there was as you saw there some fighting in there as well but um the idea is that um there is also a creative mode in the game that offers a photo editor uh, sorry a photo mode and an island editor that allows you to play with some of the extra bits as well so that you can just kind of create rather than explore so yeah really really excited with that um it was on my wish list beforehand staying on it now it's a team of 15 that are working on that game and it's in the pre-alpha phase so that's a loft by astrolab interactive inc okay in 2024 <laughs> i love when the next thing comes up and you're like what <laughs> welcome to the next game it's called charles the bee not pippa the god it's charles the bee by blue pin studio so this is a team of two to five people. This game is in beta. Let's take a look at the very short demo. Yes, Charles the Bee is a two genre mashup. So essentially, Charles the Bee thinks that he's a fantastic dancer, but he can't get into the disco until he's harvested enough pollen to pay the entry fee. <laughs> so you saw the rhythm action element there as one part. The other part of the game is all around... Um, being able to go and collect the pollen. And that's kind of like a, um, I didn't quite work out from the extra gameplay video footage that was submitted in, whether or not you're kind of, it, it looked like a driver game, but like an endless like buzzer as you was kind of going around doing stuff. So yeah, really, really intrigued and interested to see how that will get developed over time. Um, there is the ability to mod this game, which I think is what is kind of making me go, hmm. So you can put in custom art, custom note charts, um, custom songs. So if you wanted Charles the Bee to be busy dancing around to all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff, excuse me, it's there for you. Um, really intrigued. It's the only rhythm game that's in this whole indie um Cup Canada uh, showcase, so we'll see how it goes along. And thank you, uh, Beristus, for the comment. You're very cool. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. 
Um, I appreciate this channel is chaotic and all over the place, but that's half the fun. <laughs> so next up, and to be fair, we had 80 games to get through. This is number 68. We're nearly there, everyone. We're nearly there. Uh, this next one is called Times and Galaxy by um, Copy Chaser Games. It's from a team of six to ten people. It's in the alpha stage at the moment. And it describes itself as an interplanetary adventure. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Times and Galaxy, the solar system's most trusted holographic newspaper. <laughs> as the first ever robo reporter, it's your job to chase leads and interview sources. In space, itching to break the biggest news in the galaxy? Well, too bad. You're an intern. <laughs> We're assigning you to cover intersolar cat shows, explosive toy launches, and of course, space ghost funerals. Use your keen robotic eye to survey the scene and ask the right space lizards the right space questions. <laughs> Every cycle, we're counting on you to construct a story that makes your editor percolate with pride. Lucky for you, we have a mostly supportive team aboard the scanner, our massive mobile newsroom, and your new home. Befriend a colorful cast of alien weirdos as you travel the solar system in search of the next great story. Now get out there. That jar of eyes isn't going to interview itself. Time <laughs> and Galaxy from Copy Chaser and Fellow Traveler. Coming 2024. Wish list now. I love that. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> I love the idea of this. Um, oh, thank you, Barristus. You're very, very kind. Um, okay. So this is all around trying to uh, get the right story for your intergalactic newspaper. Um, what's really interesting around this is... Um, I'll, I'll have to read out some of the blurb that's been submitted in with this and apologies I hate having to read blurb but it makes it explains it quite well so you do the actual journalism in the game um, which has been implemented in a way where you go and tell the story ask the right questions and then mock up all of that which the trailer trailer then shows um, however the more thorough you are in your investigation the more options you'll have for the game's unique build a story tool which will let you choose how to position a story, whether it's a hard-hitting expose or a tabloid um, hyperbole, then ultimately what you then choose will impact how the editors will then assess it over time and then they'll kind of assess what your capability is over time as well, which is quite cool. Um, but what they were saying is, uh, and this is from the developer, it's important to note that this isn't a journalism simulator um, and blatantly not as hard hitting as some of those. <laughs> um, it's a narrative adventure first and foremost, where you do German journalism as the core mechanic um, around that sitcom Saturday morning cartoon feel. And I have to say that the trailer really gets that. Um, over 100 NPCs to get to know in the final game. Uh, me likey, me likey. Didn't know about this game beforehand. Will absolutely be wishlisting afterwards. And as I said earlier on in these streams, this is all around like what's unique, what looks interesting, what feels like it is pushing the boundary of something. This feels like one of those games to me. So big thumbs up. Next up is Siri. I keep wanting to say serious business. It's serious business from Oofin Sprouts. What a name. Um, this is a two to five uh, dev team. The game itself is in early access, and I feel like there's going to be a cumulus cloud coming in. So let's take a look at the trailer. Slopsters. You sit next to my next door neighbours. <gasps>
There we go. So that is serious business. Um, now, the trailer does help, but the gameplay footage that we were submitted in privately gave more meat on the bones to what this game does. Because initially I was like, it's a farming sim where you play as a cloud. <laughs> and it is ish. But actually, um, the game itself is set out to be a bit more like um, what I would, what the developer calls a board game style engine builder. So everything that you're busy harvesting basically creates multipliers that then improves your efficiency. But then, so you're like plotting things to then be much bigger and better and make things like your score get better and better over and over time and it kind of exponentially improves and like builds up over time so i hope that kind of makes sense it feels similar to a farming game um when i saw the cloud i was instantly thinking of rain on my parade um but it's not like that at all <laughs> so that was a bad thing to jump to and um, plenty of mini games cute cozy fun um cut scenes um so yeah interested with this one um, I haven't put it on my wish list yet, um, but I'm intrigued enough to kind of come back round to it again. Um, I think it it's an interesting one because it falls. It, I still am categorising it in my brain as a farming sim, even though it's doing something slightly different. So I kind of need to work out in my brain where I think it belongs, so that I know whether or not I want to wish list it or not. Personally. Yeah, that's Siri, Siri, serious business. Please call it serious business. <laughs> I can't help myself. Okay, next game up is called Kinetic Storm by Broken Teapot Studios. We've all been there. Uh, this is a solo dev game uh, and it's currently in beta. And um, here comes a trailer. Quick and set, quick, quick, dirty and simple is that one. So Kinetic Storm made by a single dev. Um, the additional footage that they sent in behind the scenes I, was super, super helpful. Um, and the developer dropped a game's name in that I instantly thought of, Nova Drift. Um, and that's what they were inspired by to make this game. So if you like the look of that and you've never played Nova Drift, I highly recommend hopping over and having a go. Um, it's running on a custom engine um, because, uh, and the reason why I want to bring that up is I really, it's just an odd thing to call out. I really like the smoke effects on the explosions here. There's something really satisfying about seeing how high fidelity they were. Um, yeah, this looks good to me because it's got that kind of randomised choosing your upgrade from random decks in your deck building. I'm assuming because this is pitched as a roguelike um, that there will be other things that you can uncover with your upgrades and then put them into your deck um because before each run you have to choose a primary and secondary weapon um and you can either choose to just focus on upgrading one or try and balance the both or whatever it is that you want to go for there's also a dash ability in there as well that's upgradable so again very similar to those auto battle roguelikes that are permeating the budget end of steam at the moment this feels like that but from a proper i'm saying proper um like actual shoot 'em up perspective. So yeah, thumbs up from me. Didn't know about the game beforehand. We'll be absolutely adding this to my wish list afterwards. Um, this is my kind of a quick 20 minute jam um, that would suit me quite happily. So that's Kinetic Storm. Well done to Broken Teapot Studio for that. Next up is a game that I had on my wish list before Indie Cup Canada. Um, it's called Once a Tale. It's by um Karaju Games and Triple Boris. Um, it's in beta and it's from a team of two to five people. And um this is a 
you'll spot the reason why I probably added it to the wish list by the art style. So let's get it going. Do it now. So this is a um, stop motion styled hand crafted platform adventure game. So the idea is um, you're playing as Hansel and Gretel in this, uh, traveling through their fairy land. But um, although you're playing as two characters, it is a single player experience and you'll flip between the two characters as you go. So it's one of those kind of faux co-op adventures, which I always quite enjoy because one character will have like one set of abilities, the other will have the other. And you need to, that's part of the puzzle was to try and work out who does what with what to get through the game. There isn't any particular... Um, the experience is puzzle first rather than combat, which I think suits this style of adventure and the way how it's all been built up together. Um, and it's all been built on real time, like real miniatures. So that was the reason why I added it onto my wish list because I adore some a game where it goes off and does something like very different art style-y. But it also seemed to be backing it up with, it's not just pretty, there's plenty of things to be doing. So yeah, stop motion, puppet art, Mm, 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 mm. love 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 um great stuff there um and it is a joint venture between um carriage deck games and triple boris even though that is two different um teams it's still actually only a couple of people that are working on it so well done to the people involved in once a tale was on my wish list beforehand staying on it big thumbs up <laughs> Next up is, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the funniest game that I spotted in Indie Cup Canada 2023. It's called Esophagize. <laughs> um, and it's by Esophagize LLC. I hope like you will make more than just the one game, Esophagize LLC. And this is a comedic platform party game. And whilst I probably would, on a long play session, put that game on mute very quickly, <laughs> I, 
I th- I do think the actual um like whole concept is superb. So one to four players, co-op and competitive. You saw some of the mini game modes that are in there versus the adventure mode where you're actually all working together. Um, <laughs> the whole thing is it screams party classic in waiting. So I love the fact that it's um, all around stretchy uh, necks and trying to get um, around different places. It feels fresh, unique, interesting, fun. Um, with that competitive aspect onto it as well. The soundtrack is entirely made out of um, vocal sounds and a jews harp. So, yeah, interesting uh, decision there on that one. But again, it just adds to that quirky, weird theming. So, huge fan of the Suffer Guys. Never heard of it beforehand. Absolutely going on my wish list. Um, and there's very few games I've said this to. That's probably a day one buy for me. <laughs> I, I know I know I know the games are like <laughs> and that'll definitely be one of them um, and if any of the Scandi crew ever spot this video at a later point this is definitely something that we'd probably live stream <laughs> so yeah good fun um, good drunk game that one okay we're in the final few now so well done to anyone that's got this far next up is another game that is already on my wish list as well um, along with a few others that we've had earlier on in the stream called Lil Guardsman by Hilltop Studios. This is in beta. It's going to be released um, or published by Versus Evil, who are well known in the um, indie scene. And it's a, from a team of six or ten people. So let's take a look at the trailer for Lil Guardsman. Lil, Lil, wake up. Huh? I think it's time we had the talk. What? What time is it? There comes a time in every young person's life when they have to work their dad's shift at the guard shed while he goes and bets on the goblin ball game. Yep, it's happening. <laughs> you bet it is. You'll meet exciting people. I'm bringing a basket of baked goods to my family. You'll get to use the tools of the trade. You wish to challenge me to ceremonial combat? And if you get in trouble, just pick up the phone and call one of the official advisors. They're always happy to help. Wait, you're going to have everyone I know thrown in jail? Well, I wasn't going to, but that's a much better idea. So, think you'll be okay? <laughs> of course, Dad. But if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do things my way. Before I go and face my destiny... Mm, uh, can you spot me a fiver? <laughs> this moron doesn't speak for us. Mind if we just leave? Oh, Lil, do speak up. I can barely hear you over all that racket. Do not admit anyone else today. We're full up to half an hour. Is it that you don't have it, or that you don't want to give it to me? Orlando was a d a real f of a d Pardon my goblin. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're gonna give me, a 12-year-old, the power to rewind time? Why not? Well, I wasn't going to, but that's a much better idea. Try not to do any irreversible damage. Um. Lil, Lil, wake up. Love, 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 love. So, like, we've all, uh, a lot of people have known of, like, Papers, Please and that kind of style of game. If you take that into the comedic point-and-click realm, that's what you'll get with Lil Guardsman. Um, I really, really love the comedic stylings of this. I love the aesthetic and the graphic um, way how it, and, and the way how that then leans into the comedic chaos that's going on as well. It's just, it's really well balanced from the visual and the audio and the narrative design of this as well. Um, having seen the additional demo, complete gameplay walkthrough of the demo that the dev sent through as well, um, that helped me kind of really solidify just the depth of how deep this game goes as well. So um, the game is played across 12 levels, about 65 turns um, or interrogations inside those 12 levels. But actually, when you go into those interrogations, each one of those has 
um, like its own little mini map of different unique paths or like courses that those conversations can take. So they aren't just like binary yes, no decisions. They'll all have their own little mini paths inside as well. And so um, probably this might be a weird thing to parallel this to, but remember when um, the Quantic Dream game that recently came out on PlayStation 4 came out. Oh, that's going to really annoy me. Mm. Mm. Quantic Dream. It was Detroit Become Human. I was like, it's not... <laughs> I was saying that being like, Texas? No, it's Detroit. Um, when that game had that trailer and it was like, here's one interaction, here's four different things. And it kept on ballooning out. And then you was like, oh my God, there's thousands of different choice points. This feels like a comedic version of that, but um, in indie comedic form. So yeah, huge, huge fan of Lil Guardsman. Was on my wish list beforehand, absolutely staying on it. Totally deserves uh, my time. And I think actually this would be another one that I would quite happily purchase on day one. So um, big shout outs. So that is from Hilltop Studios in beta now. We'll see how that goes. Next up is a game called All Hands on Deck. <clears throat> this is by Flat, Flat Thumb Interactive, easy for me to say, a team of two to five people. And we're getting piratey. Let's take a look. It's got real time in it. Oh, keyword generator. That didn't give us much to go on. <laughs> and the rest is genuinely just... Oh, I want you to add it to the wish list twice. If you did that, it would remove it from the wish list. I don't think that was a good trailer design decision. <laughs> okay, so... Um, frustratingly, I have seen quite a lot more behind the game... Behind the scenes footage of that game in development. So if I kind of just dive back again... There we go. At least there's some kind of frame of gameplay. So, um, it's pirate naval battles with um, deck building roguelike elements. Um, you can move around a world map, trying to navigate all of the different waters um, and take dive. And you can kind of do it from afar, but then you can actually steer the ship as well, should you want to. Um, which felt quite cool to be able to kind of go in and do that kind of real granular movement of stuff, which looked quite decent uh, from the footage that I'd seen. Um, <clears throat> you can... Um, it, it's kind of each level, the way that it was being shown, was that it's randomly generated from handcrafted pieces, almost like... I'm going to refer it back to like the labyrinth game where it's like pieces of jigsaws being put together to design specific maps of the world. Um, and then the idea with that is that well, as you sail around, you'll then hire a different crew or you'll rescue crew from like abandoned ships. They'll then dive onto your ship and then we'll unlock additional abilities. So you want to kind of go around and save people as you go. Um, that's been developed by two brothers. So well done to Flat Thumb Interactive for that one. All hands on deck. That was a teaser trailer. I strongly suggest, I mean, to be fair, that was re literally released 11 days ago. So it's very, very early in its development phase. Um, let's hope a full trailer gets out for other people soon because I've seen some stuff behind the scenes that shows a lot of promise for that game, which doesn't necessarily stand out on that trailer. Next up from Idea Games is the second and only second mobile only game that we've got in Indie Cup. Canada 2023 and it's called Otherworldly. Uh, it's made by a team of two to five people. It's a space themed single player mobile game all about word matchings. Let's have a look. Our words are glitched. Our energy is dissolving. 
But we found a hack. Match related words to generate sparks of energy. Let's see. <laughs> Butterfly matches with monarch. And cheerful matches elated. Yay! Travel through new star systems where you'll meet charming characters on your quest to restore Alphazoid Prime's energy source. Can you juggle time, space, and meanings to save our galaxy? Unlock new avatars, like this green alien. Go on side missions for an adrenaline rush and see how quickly you can go or how many matches you can make. Great, new record. We all know different words, so the game adapts to you, whether you're an expert wordsmith or learning English. What's a cephalopod? Pop up a quick hint. Launch yourself on a thought-provoking journey through the English language across synonyms, categories, and cultures. Tickle your mind and showcase your word wits. Otherworldly, a galactic word quest. What's and really see annoying? How quickly you can go. Can that come to PC, please? Because I really like the idea of that, but I don't mobile game. <laughs> PC, please. Um, yeah, this feels like one of those on-the-go games where I'd want to dive into it for a couple of minutes. I spotted daily challenges in that trailer, um, which I would absolutely be dialing into for a, a, a wee while so that I could feel good about myself. <laughs> um, and I, I, again, it's edutainment that I feel like is done well and done right, because you can be proper cringe with all of like edutainment related content. This feels like it's naturally helping you learn whilst gamifying learning the English language. So, yeah, really, really uh, pleased with that. I could see so a game like this. I don't developer. If you're watching this, go chat to family gaming db um so there's a guy there called andy who um great guy does an awful lot of great stuff but he specifically works with games uh, and promotes games that deals with family edutainment this one alongside the maths one that we saw earlier i think would be a really really good fit for making sure that people know about your games through family gaming db um, and taming gaming is the other thing that he runs as well so yeah get on in i think they would help you out all right final five we're nearly there you've done well next up is a game called keyword two nightfall so again we're all about words here um but this is a 3d cyberpunk detective rpg mm -mm 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 -mm. let's take a look Hello. am I doing in the game? Hop Hop Detective. What a great, what a great addition. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there are a couple of things I wanted to call out specifically about this game. So this is a sequel. I didn't know about Keyword 1, but um, that um, went down quite well, uh, I believe, and got quite a few thousand sales. Um, and as a result of this, I've added keyword one onto my wish list because I really liked the developer walkthrough that we were shared privately of this. So um, the key here is that you interrogate um, all of the people in the game through either typing or actually voicing your questions to them. It then goes through a AI processing to try and work out what it is you're trying to say and then will give you back prompted answers based on what the AI is thinking that you're trying to say. 
So it makes the, it, the idea of this and the proof will be in the pudding and actually playing the thing and, and seeing how it lands is that it then feels much more like you're really having to do detective work because you'll be sitting there trying to work out what's the best thing to say, how can you trigger someone to say the right answer because obviously AI doesn't work perfectly, doesn't care, don't mind if you're a chat GDP or what, it's not it's not real human so you've got to really um, work at it but it also the other thing that the developer said that really resonated with me was the whole thing takes place in a single city block and it was inspired by the um, Kowloon Walled, Walled City and the entire thing has every clue in plain sight in front of you but you need to think about everything being a potential clue and there's a game that I'm playing at the moment that I'll be putting out a review on later this week called The Gap, which is designed in a very specific way that I'm absolutely loving because nothing, like, everything is there in front of you if only you look and you're observant and you pay attention and you play with things. And this, having seen a developer's kind of gameplay walkthrough, feels very similar in its style. So you're looking for audio clues, music pieces, um, like changes in the wall, things that could be interacted with in different ways, um, asking the questions and getting the answer that will then take you somewhere else. And if you can see it, you can get to it, basically, was the idea behind this. So I was really, really excited. This is definitely one of my um, potential standouts, I think, from um, Indie Cup Canada 2023. Big up, added to my wish list, didn't know about it before. That's keyword to Nightfall from City From Naught is a dev team behind this. A team of six to ten people working on this game. So best of luck to them. Uh, coming to PC and potentially consoles as well in 2024. Okay, next up is a game that doesn't have a trailer because it is so early in the development phase. It's in pre-alpha. It's made by Jacob Francis, who trades as Fentwick Indie, but he is Jacob as a solo developer. And I'll just play a little bit of gameplay footage here. Um, inspired by Halo and Hollow Knight, Cube Crusaders takes sci-fi and fast-paced action of Halo and combines it with darker Hollow Knight, which Hollow Knight-inspired moods and themes into the game itself. The one added twist is that the player can decide the ultimate fate of their defeated foes. So I'll rudely talk over the top of this just to give you some more uh, details of the game whilst we look at some of the dev uh, work. So as you can see, stuff comes in waves. As you can spot the halo helmets on the people that you're playing as, that was my first thought when I saw this. Um, but the idea is you've got a variety of different weapons, quite a lot of customization um, around the helmet, visor, shoulders and all of that for the actual player itself and the elemental aura that someone will have as well. Uh, there's three game modes to play um, in solo or up to four players for our local co-op or Steam remote play and that's a campaign mode as well as horde mode which is what you're looking at now. Um, oh here we go and here's the campaign mode for single player. comes with a skill tree um yeah i don't have too many comments to say about this i think it felt and i appreciate that this is really really early in the dev phase like aesthetically i don't mind this at all because it's going for that cuboid look and feel and there's something around like um 3d dot pixels and all of that kind of stuff that is kind of helpful for this type of game i oh, hear some customization elements of it as well which is quite cool i think <clears throat> my reservations around this is what does it do differently that i've not seen elsewhere because this just this feels like a cute 3d cuboid pixel block 
version of games that I've played hundreds of times before elsewhere. So whilst you get to decide the fate of someone if they've died or whether or not you're going to kind of revive them or whatever, um, or ascend them elsewhere, it doesn't really dive into exactly what that means by that twist of fate too much. Um, yeah, I feel like I've played this an awful lot of times elsewhere and that's my main issue with Cube Crusaders. Um, it's not something that I'm going to be personally wishlisting myself, although I could see quite a few people that I know would be interested in that. Um, and I think with time, that unique USP may become more apparent, um, which will help it in the future. The next game doesn't have a trailer on YouTube. I'm so confused by this. So I'm really sorry that we're going to have to look at... God knows how this is going to come through. I'll try that. That'll do. It's called uh, Falinair Fantasy by Fallimancy Interactive. It's in alpha at the moment. Um, and it is a turn-based RPG crawler played via Twitch chat. So. Oh my god, it's so good. I'm so happy right now. Okay. There's bot right there. <laughs> I didn't know that it would loop back around. <laughs> okay, helping hand. Let's see what happens. Nice. How did you hit for 73 on that critical? I see Point died before he was supposed to, and he just left. He never came back. Yeah, I, I'm not getting bullied by chat. I'm getting bullied by the game. Oh, what did you do? You did it. Like a romantic theory? This is all chat power right now. What? What was that? Welcome to Valinor Fantasy, oh. the first ever turn-based RPG played through Twitch chat. Band together with your viewers and travel through various dungeons using chat commands to navigate. Up to okay. eight chatters at a time can join combat as one of seven different classes, each with unique skills and abilities. They level up each class separately and gain new skills as they defeat enemies. Once you're done playing, find another streamer playing the game and send a message in their chat to have all of your player data loaded in pick back up in their game where you left off. Mm. A new era of stream games is here. We're ready. Are you? So, I... Whilst that first trailer veered towards the cringier side of a trailer, that second one explained much more about what I was going to explain. So, the idea of this is that there's seven classes, currently only one of seven have been kind of built and played for, from what we've been able to see in the actual stuff that's going on. But the plan behind this is that, basically, Twitch chat kind of tells you where you want to go left or right whenever you come to decisions, so it's all about, like, voting-based. But then they all become, like, people in the game to help with some of that battling that's going on too. So, I really like the idea of this... I don't Twitch stream, so this is going to be very difficult if this ends up getting through to, <laughs> to, to um, being selected for me to actually have like a real good time on this one because it will probably just be me and myself on another device going, let's try this, um, and hoping that some people would join in. But think going back to my idea of is this unique? Kind of, yes. Does this try something new and different and interesting? Yes. Um and there's a few games that are out there at the moment that are trying putting like 50, 100 people all into a game in very different ways, which I think is just really, really cool. Um, and the idea is basically the first eight players that get to join in on the game on your stream become characters that you can then wander around on, which I think is just absolutely fab. So, yeah, really interesting concept and idea. Um, please, please, please put a trailer onto YouTube so that that's helpful for people to be able to find you. Um, all I had at the moment was very, very long um, Twitch streams of stuff, which is very difficult to then be able to pinpoint people to and say that's why it's interesting and different. So that's Falloneer Fantasy by Falomancy Interactive. There we go. 
All right, second to last game is BVP. Burglars versus Brats. A game inspired by Home Alone. Let's take a look. Chunky trailer, this one. <laughs> Introducing Burglars vs. Brads, a team-based multiplayer game where players compete as both the Burglars and the Brads in a game of attack and defend. She looks so annoying. Playing I as want the, the Brads burglars, to your die. goal is simple. You work as a team to plan your attack, break in, secure as much loot and valuables as possible, and drop it off back at the van. Escape before the round time runs out and the authorities show up. While playing as the Brats, you'll work as a team to defend your house. You'll construct traps using simple household items such as string, tacks and nails, glue, <laughs> and of course, marbles. You'll place door traps that activate when the burglars enter, dropping objects on their head. Secure the house by boarding up the windows. Place ground traps underneath as a nasty surprise for the burglars as they break in. The Brats can also construct a variety of weapons and gadgets on the fly including the punch club and auto launcher, which both automatically fire when triggered by the burglars. <laughs> the Brats will use other gadgets and classic childhood toys such as the boomerang and the slingshot to defend the house. The burglars will also have a variety of tools and gadgets to choose from for their attack. At the beginning of each round, the burglars will use their drones to infiltrate and scout the house. But they'll need to be careful if the brats are able to spot the drones, they may be able to shoot them down. As burglars make their way into the house, they'll need to either avoid or disarm traps that would otherwise slow them down or allow them to become caught. <laughs> burglars must be wary of other elements in the environment as well, such as NPCs or alarms that will detect them and alert authorities. The burglars can cut phone lines or turn off the power to give them the upper hand in the house. The match is complete when both teams have played on both sides. The team that defended their house better wins the match. Last oh, the interesting. One of the most okay. Parts of Burglars vs. Brads is the house building mode. The house building mode will allow players to build houses in real time with friends or other players online. Completed houses can be uploaded for the community to rate, play, and provide feedback. I have to say, so Home Alone the Game sounds fantastic, <laughs> uh, and I really, really like this. I haven't played Hello Neighbor, which is what I was initially kind of thinking is this similar to. So, like, my jury, the jury's out on that kind of thing. I really like the concept of this, though, that both, and I, apologies, I, I have watched additional footage of this elsewhere, and that seems to have been lost on me. <laughs> so, the fact that, um, You've got um, almost like a Rainbow Siege, Tom Clancy-esque burglars trying to go in and sort stuff out. But then you actually get to play as both sides. I think it's really, really cool. And the fact that you can build your own houses, I think that is huge. Um, I think what has been uh, really interesting is that the team behind this called Schmo... Uh, Shmawi Games um, isn't a team it's a solo person so one person is busy building this and it's taken them a couple of years to get the prototype to where it is now and they're still saying like although we, we uh, it, it looks and plays really well um, it still needs a lot of work to get into an early access shippable state um, so thank you to Shmawi uh, for not doing what it looks like City Skylines 2 is about to do and launch a game that is totally not ready for launch and just go, oh, well, optimization, because um, that is grim. 
uh, and ruining my launch day live stream. I booked off the day from work for City Skylines too, and now I'm not even going to buy the thing because it looks like an absolute state. Um, I might be talked around, but I'm not very impressed with it at the minute. But for this game, Burglars vs. Brats, great concept, really well put together, looks like a great foundation to build on for the future. And the fact that you have to do both the Brats and the Burglars and then it decides who's, who did it best, I think is a good spin on it. So yeah, well done, really intrigued. Uh, I don't know if that's available to be added to Steam Wishlist, but if it is, I will. And I can see Roy in the chat. This burglar thing sounds like an interesting concept. It's four players, Roy. I can think of three Scandinavians who can join me. <laughs> that, that, that's instant classic screaming at each other. I can see happening very, very quickly. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So the very last game in Indie Cup Canada 2023... So we've got to number 80. Well done, everyone, or anyone that's made it through this. I think, Roy, you've watched most of it. I don't know if Beritess has given up, but thank you for stopping by. Um, this is a game called Ferra the Sundred Tribes. It's made by Massive Damage Games. It's in the pre-alpha stage, and it's the second and only game. Oh, hi, Hamperdink Fang Fangbona. Great name. That and keyword two aren't on the stream. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Um, I'll dump links to their trailers once I finish the thing. I didn't want to spoil it beforehand in case someone was steaming through. But um, yeah, thank you. Um, Fair of the Sundered uh, Tribes is the last game here. It's the second team that's got more than 20 people in it. So... As you can see here, real, real indies. And the vast majority of the games that you've seen here over the last five hours or so have been all five or less, largely, um, or mostly. So let's take a look at this trailer and I'll shut up. Hello. Ooh, I like Star Renegades. So I think we've ended on an absolute banger with uh, Fair of the Sundra Tribes. This looks proper cool to me. So a couple of things to clarify. Um, this game is playable in multiplayer as well as single player. Um, and there was a moment in that trailer where you saw like multiple people like running and diving off with their like little hang glider or wind gliders. Now they can be other players, but they can also then just be replaced um by other villagers just in general so you can all work together or it can just be all on your own as well at the same time with uh, potentially some ai counterparts filling in the gap so that'll be interesting to be seen it looks like um monster hunter ish um but because of that whole colony management stuff i wonder how much more it will be more wild heartsy um which interestingly I've not long bought and is that I was sitting in my sofa in cellophane because it was only 15 quid and I thought oh do you know what let's give it a punt so um where that's a bit more that's got monster hunting and colony stuff all kind of pulled in together where and this kind of does the same thing love the art style of this 
Um, and I actually a big tagline for Massive Damage Games, just reading on their blurb, um, their motto is Indie Spirit with Big Vision. And I think that trailer kind of shows that very, very nicely. Um, aerial based combat with traversal mechanics. Um, looking forward to that. So Monster Hunter meets Shadow of the Colossus. What's not to love? <laughs> Um, hadn't heard of this game beforehand absolutely going on my wish list um, as are quite a lot of these games so yeah really 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 pleased with that and that's it um, thank you Message Danish Games and Ferrer the Sundred Tribes for getting us to number 80 um, I'll be popping links to all of the trailers in the description as soon as this stream closes down um, I won't necessarily be calling out the games that I'm going to be shortlisting um, and to kind of explain now, so what happens next? Um, if I just dive in, oh no, let's not do that. Let's quickly, bear with me a sec. Let me get rid of that and I'll do that. There we go. Now you get to see my receding hairline slightly larger. Let's do that and Ah, uh, playing with OBS on the fly, maybe don't do that in stream. Eh, uh, you know who I am. Okay, so what happens next? So, um, up until October the 30th, um, myself and all of the other judges that are part of Critics' Choice get to um, put in our recommendations, I guess. And so, sorry, it's really angering me that it doesn't all line up nicely. Should have put in a filter before. There we go. That it do, laddie, that it do. Yeah, that do. Right. Um, so yeah, so we've got up until October the 30th to kind of get all of this in. So I've done all of mine. Um, I'll be providing feedback to every developer um, just about what I liked slash um, called out and maybe some areas of improvement. I think what's really interesting with this was seeing 80 trailers and 80, not always 80, there's probably about 70 of them had submitted an additional content on top of that. There are definite things that I would probably recommend to developers to do in the future should I ever be privileged enough to be in a position to be a critic for something in the future again. God knows how I managed to end up in this situation, but I'm delighted and privileged and proud that I am. I think being succinct in what you're saying, um, if you're going to post in like two hour development streams, please provide some timestamps so that we can call out specific unique selling points of your game. The amount of uh, video footage as well that started off with people booting up their systems and then going in and looking at, um, just like what I was doing there, mucking about trying to get all of this all sorted and right. Um, yes, this is in a live setting, a bit awkward. If you're uploading that footage to YouTube and you've got the first 20 seconds of you in your settings menu, YouTube does have the ability to edit that and just chop it out. And it's a, it's a three click deal. So I strongly recommend doing that because it just professionalizes it slightly. I'd also say as well, that even if you don't have a very good voiceover or a naturally bouncy and listenable voice, being able to just kind of say, hello, this is our game, the unique selling point is blah, 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 look out for this, this and this, really, really helps kind of get the gist of your game across. And if you think of it like an elevator pitch, um, that's super, super helpful as well. So what is your game? What does it do? The unique selling point is gamers need to be interested because I think that in a nutshell you can get that out easily in 90 seconds and if I take you back to um, Every Day We Fight was a really really good example of that where they actually use that trailer externally for gamers um, that is like top tier quintessential um, the best way of doing something for that so yeah there we go so um, we uh, the different judges, we're all submitting between 10 to 15 games to be shortlisted. Those votes then all get counted up and then whatever is shortlisted then goes through to round two where we don't just rely on gameplay footage. 
we go in and play the demo builds, prototypes and whatever we've been submitted to actually go and play those before we then do submissions. I believe most of that can be live streamed as well. Um, some of it might not be able to be because it might not be builds that are publicly available for demos or something like that. So I'll have to kind of research before I commit to being able to say that I can live stream stuff because I've had to kind of get around all kinds of NDAs for this stream to try and make this work. Um, and hopefully I've not buggered it up. We'll soon see. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of deal and idea behind that. Um, and then everyone will submit their votes at the end of the demo where we basically score each of those uh, submissions between 1 and 10, 10 being the top, 1 being the lowest. And that's how you get your Critics' Choice Award. So hopefully that's informative and interesting and gets to kind of show the process of how it all works. Um, Privileged and delighted to be a part of it. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you're a developer of one of these 80 games and you wanted to get in touch and kind of ask some additional questions, more than happy for you to do so. My contact details are on the contact page on YouTube um, and over on highplanegames.com where you can contact me via a form there too. So thanks everyone for watching. Thank you for people commenting down in the chat. Roy Beriestis and Humperdink Fangboner. What a name. Um, and hopefully you found maybe some games that you'd be interested in to add to your wish list too. Wish lists really help, particularly the smaller indie devs, because then that trains the Steam algorithm usually um, to help it be put up on that new and uh, interesting uh, lists on the homepage. So yeah, take care. Enjoy. Catch you all soon. Bye.